Undergoing IVF is basically surrendering your body to the medication, to the doctors, to the appointments and the protocol. You are no longer in control. There's still a lot of stigma and shame around infertility, especially I feel like in the black community because there's the stereotype that, you know, we're super fertile, it will be easy, but no one talks about the messy middle and what happens in the in-between, what happens when cycles fail because IVF isn't a silver bullet. So then what does that mean? always had a plan. We got married when I was 27 and decided that we would start trying to start our family when I turned 30. Two months went by, four months went by, six months went by. I was diagnosed with uh, infertility due to blocked fallopian tubes. The doctor told me that IVF would be our best chance of conceiving. Afterward, I was sitting at my kitchen counter stunned because this is not how I planned for our family. front of the fertility clinic that we go to here in Wicker Park and um, we are starting our second round of IVF after the first round failed. I feel like I don't have the same enthusiasm or energy that I did the first time around and like this um, optimism that like it's gonna work because we'll follow the rules and it'll be fine um, because we did that and we didn't get the outcome that we had hoped for and that we expected and so there's um, a little bit of like okay let's let's try and let's see, and I'm trying not to get my hopes up. Brenda told me that IVF is a full-time job, and it is. And looking forward to talking to Dr. Maggie more about what infertility is like and the effect that it has on your body. Hi, L'Oreal, how are you? I'm good, Dr. Maggie, how are you? I was reading a little bit about your story, um, and it seems like you've been through so much. We started our journey um, trying to conceive naturally in the fall of 2018, and by the summer of 2019, realized that something was wrong and was diagnosed with uh, infertility due to blocked fallopian tubes. We started IVF at the beginning of 2020, and so far have undergone four cycles uh, that were unsuccessful, and currently are taking a break but not giving up hope. I think as more people understand that infertility is a disease and that diseases affect populations of people, infertility doesn't care what your race is, what your socioeconomic status is, even depending on what age you are. I see patients in their 20s up to patients in their 40s. I know that infertility isn't new, but some of the technology around assisted reproduction is. Can you give us a little bit of the history or timeline of the advances in infertility? Infertility has been a taboo topic for so long. I think historically women were thought to be, you know, their role in society was to bear children. And um, for many years, women were not, you know, as commonly um, in workplaces and to give you a little background, IVF is just over 40 years old. The first baby, Louise Brown, was born just over 40 years ago. So a lot of this is new. I think that women most of the time think it's something they're doing wrong or something that they, they should have done this earlier. They should have not waited. And there's a lot of blame that people place on themselves. It's something I feel ashamed talking about too is the jealousy that is involved in infertility, seeing your friends and coworkers, they're like, I wasn't even trying and we just got pregnant and I'm like, good for you, mute. The biggest um, piece of advice that I give to uh, my friends is remembering that there's many paths to parenthood. And while we all dream of having our own biologically related children, 
and that is achievable for many, many people. Just realizing that there's so many, you know, there's different avenues that are open to us. I think the other thing is really just making sure that you feel comfortable with your doctor, with the clinic that you're going to. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with this person. Um, so feeling like that you can share openly with them, that you have a nice dialogue of conversation of how, you know, of what's happening with your treatment and what your goals are, I think is really important. I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's exactly what we did. We broke up with our first doctor at clinic because it just wasn't a fit and it doesn't always work. And my goal is in sharing that uh, process and that journey because it's not linear. Everyone's story is different. Every body is different. Every cycle is different and hopefully help someone else.